In this video, we review uh, the temperature dependence of the rate constant, uh, and also we explain the values of the pre-exponential factor A and the activation energy EA, which are parameters of the Arrhenius equation. All right, so uh, let's explain uh, each one of these two parameters in turn. The first parameter is um, this pre-exponential factor A. And uh, notice that the first thing that we can say is that A has exactly the same units as the rate constant. Notice that uh, this exponential term is dimensionless, it doesn't have any units, okay? And that means that, well, the uh, pre-exponential factor A needs to have exactly the same units as the rate constant. Now remember that the rate constant, the units of the rate constant depend uh, on the order of the reaction, right? So for a first order reaction, uh, those units would be per second. For a second order reaction, it would be more to the minus one per second and so forth. All right, so what is the pre-exponential factor? Uh, let's imagine a chemical reaction like, for example, uh, H reacting with water, HOH, to generate H2 plus OH. All right, so in order for this reaction to take place, uh, what has to happen is that uh, the two uh, molecules, uh, or atom and molecule in this case, they actually need to approach and collide. Okay, so uh, this pre-exponential factor is a measure for how frequently these two species encounter each other. Again, notice that for them to react, they have to approach each other, uh, and then uh, break a bond is uh, uh, broken, this bond is broken, and then a bond is formed. Uh, and again, uh, there's only uh, so many uh, uh, times per second that these collisions can take place. In this case, these this, uh, substances will be in the gas phase, but you can also do it, do it in solution. What is more, uh, that pre exponential factor also has to account for the fact that the orientation has to be right. Okay, so notice that in order for this bond to be formed, H has to approach uh, the H atom of water or one of the H atoms of water directly. The reaction will not take place if this H atom is approaching the water molecule through the oxygen atom. Right, so uh, again, that's a little bit of what the pre-exponential factor uh, uh, is all about. We'll talk more, much more about this in the next chapter, but for, for us, uh, for now, uh, suffice it to say that again, it's a measure of how frequently uh, collisions between the two reagents take place and uh, whether the orientation of those collisions is, is correct for reaction. Okay? All right, so that is the pre exponential factor. Now, the uh, activation energy. All right, so, what is the activation energy? Well, uh, to study the activation energy, what we actually have to do uh, is uh, recall something that is called the reaction coordinate. Okay, so here we're going to plot uh, the energy of the reaction as a function of what we call the reaction coordinate, which is a measure for uh, the progress of the reaction. Okay, so uh, here we have reagents, so this will be H plus water, HOH, and then here we will have, we will have products, which is uh, H2 plus OH. Notice that this reaction is exothermic. Right, so in order for this reaction to take place, uh, what has to happen is, again, these two reagents need to approach and uh, some bonds have to be uh, uh, broken, which is, for example, this one, and a bond has to be formed. Okay, so while all that is taking place, there's going to be a deformation of some of the bonds in these molecules. For example, we know that this bond has to become increasingly larger, okay, before it can actually break, and H can uh, bind with this other H. Right, so that comes at an energetic cost, and that therefore we can actually uh, profile uh, the reaction energy is something like this, right? Where this energy, this is the energy, the cost that uh, takes you to break the bond before the new bond is formed. Okay, so uh, phenomenologically, what we can actually say is that the activation energy is going to be related to this uh, uh, ener energy requirement uh, for the reaction to take place. Again, in the next chapter, we're going to, to talk much more. Uh, uh, accurately about what the activation energy is and how is that related uh, uh, to the reaction barrier because they are slightly different even though the concept is, is fairly similar. Okay, so for now, suffice it to say that the activation energy is simply a measure for the uh, energy requirements for the reaction to take place. Okay, so um, we can finish this section by noticing that uh, this term uh, is actually a measure of the probability that when two reagents, H and water in this case, collide, they have sufficient energy to go over the barrier. Again, this exponential factor tells you if the requirement uh, for the uh, 
for the reaction to take place is say 50 kJ per mole, uh, when those molecules collide, how many of those collisions actually have enough energy over 50 kJ per mole, uh, which is the minimum energy that need, need to have to react. Okay, so uh, let's elaborate a little bit more on that. Okay. When we study thermodynamics, we um, uh, wrote up the concept of the Maxwell distribution of velocities and energies. And we said that uh, uh, when you have uh, species in the gas phase, for example, H and water, okay, suppose that these two species are in the gas phase, okay, they're actually going to have a distribution of energies not, uh, uh, at a particular temperature. Okay, not all of the molecules or atoms are going to be traveling at the same speed, uh, they're going to have a distribution of velocities, which, which is what we call the Maxwell distribution of, of velocities. Okay, when we uh, draw these uh, velocities in terms of energies, okay, that Maxwell distribution looks like this. Okay, where this might be um, how the distribution takes uh, looks at, takes a look at uh, or looks at 300 Kelvin. Okay, and then if we increase the temperature, this uh, distribution might look something like this. Okay, where this uh, should be slightly lower because the area under the curve should be about the same. Okay, so let's suppose that that is your 500 Kelvin curve right here. Okay, so this exponential term actually is as follows. Suppose that that activation energy has this value, which again for our case might be about 50 kilojoules per mole. All right, it turns out that what this, pre, uh, this exponential term tells you is of all of the collisions that you're actually taking, uh, that, that are taking place, how many of those have actually enough energy above the activation energy? Okay, so for 300 Kelvin, what, we, what you would actually find is that only the tail of the distribution, only a small fraction of the entire number of collisions will have enough energy above the activation energy to react. However, if you increase the temperature, notice that now you're actually looking at a much larger fraction of the distribution which we can uh, denote here in green. Okay, so now uh, at 500 Kelvin, a much, a much larger uh, a portion of the uh, distribution uh, has enough energy about the activation energy. What this means is that if this reaction is taking place at 500 Kelvin, then uh, uh, the collisions that are taking place, okay, um, they will have more probably uh, enough energy about the activation energy to react. And what that would mean is that the reaction uh, rate constant will go up with temperature and also that the rate will be higher. Okay, so this kind of explains very nicely uh, how uh, the activation energy and this uh, exponential factor uh, uh, enter into the uh, rate constant, and it also helps explain why uh, when you increase the temperature, then the rate constant and therefore the rate uh, goes up.